In this video, we will present the result obtained for our work exploring crypto physical dark matter and learning with physical rounding. Uh, this is a joint work with Sébastien Duval, Pierrick Méo, Charles Maman and François-Xavier Standard. So I'm Charles Maman and I will start the presentation, but the letter will be uh, shared between me and uh, Pierrick Méo. And the name of the speaker will be underlined at the bottom of the slide. So as a motivation, we will use the well-known symmetric cryptographic setup where Alice wants to exchange some data with Bob, but in a secure manner. Uh, for that, they both know a secret information K the key, uh, that they use either to encrypt some data, in the case of Alice, or to decrypt some data, in the case of Bob. While solutions for such a problem have been well studied for the last decades, uh, the issue of side channel leakage appeared as a new tweet because of the devastating attacks that they allow to achieve. And to tackle, in fact, this problem of side channel attacks, masking was proposed as a powerful but expensive countermeasure, both in hardware and software. And in fact, it was more particularly for the non-linear, non-linear, sorry, operations that are typically used in uh, the implementation of block cipher, because these imp imply a quadratic overhead in the number of shares and requires a refreshing mechanism which increase the randomness cost. Uh, as a result of this limitation, the ricking mechanism has been introduced, and the main idea of the letter is instead of directly using the secret key K for an encryption process, a temporary key uh, K star is derived from key and a public value R. Uh, this new temporary secret key K star derivation is done for each execution of a specific algorithm. And this has the direct effect of limiting the overall information that an adversary can obtain about the secret key across different executions. Of course, this remains valid as long as the so-called recurring function is secure against side channel attacks. Put in another way, recurring leverage the separation duty between an easy to protect recurring function, the RK block in dark gray in the figure, and a cryptographically strong function such as the block cipher or the tree cable block cipher represented in light gray in the figure. However, apart from the fact that it should be easy to protect, specifying unified properties for the recurring functions uh, appear to be challenging. Uh, currently published solutions adjust the trade-off between efficiency and the physical assumptions required to achieve a secure implementation in different ways. As a first example, we remind here the proposal of Medvedev et al. that has been published in 2010 and for which they consider that an adversary A can observe noisy leakage of the value of K star. Uh, their solution is based on a list of heuristic properties, such as the fact that the rocking function uh, should have good diffusion or the fact that this rocking function should be easy to protect using masking. For a more practical side of view, uh, the ricking function is in fact a final feed multiplication. So k star is obtained by multiplying k with r over the field defined by 2 to the power of big k. Their solution takes advantage of the fact that the final feed multiplication is in fact keomomorphic and allows this to implement the masking of the later using a linear overhead in terms of the number of shares. While being efficient in terms of latency and costs, it has been shown that for the Hemingway case, uh, the solution was easy to break without efficient noise. On the other side of the spectrum, Jamboski et al. made a proposal in 2016 for which they consider that an adversary is able to obtain the value of K star in full. They studied the possibility to use a rig pseudo-random function as a rocking function. More practically, uh, the letter consists in a rounded inner product, as defined on the slide. Their solution is not keomomorphic, but still nearly keomomorphic, which allows to have masking overhead with a complexity close to linear in terms of the number of shares. However, this solution still suffers from a large key requirement, and the manipulation of the letter leads to rather poor performances. Considering this background, our work aims to investigate the intermediate treat model where an adversary can observe noise free leakage of K star. For our rigging scheme, we took inspiration from the weak pseudo random function of Bonetto. 
In their article, Exploring Crypto Dark Matter at TCC 2018, they proposed the following construction. Take a binary matrix K, which is a key, and each time a random binary vector R. Y is computed as a matrix vector product K times R, and then Y is considered as a binary vector of size M, and the output Z is computed as the sum of the coefficients modulus 3. So, it's a function easy to compute, within with a matrix vector multiplication module 2, and then an addition over F3. We can abstract this kind of PRS, seeing it as a composition of a map over one field and the product k times r over another field. Since Bonnet et al. considered it is a weak PRF, it means it will be difficult for an adversary to distinguish between samples r and the corresponding z, and samples given by a truly random function. At first theory, it will be difficult for an adversary to retrieve the key k. The high-level idea for the security here is that combining linear operation over two fields will provide security. The core idea behind that is that a simple operation like a linear operation over one field is not simple over another field, so the combination of both will provide security. This kind of combination is an idea that I have used in other crypto constructions over the years. So the interest for rekeying is the following. The part k times r will be our rekeying, the way we will obtain the primary key, key star. And since it will be the multiplication of a matrix by a vector over fp, it will be easy to mask with an additive masking over fp. And then we want the map to be the leakage function, which is provided by the implementation. So if the leakage function corresponds to a linear function over a field, which is not the one where we do the multiplication, the combination of both will give us security. And the new strength of this keying is that for once we will use a security which is given by the leakage itself. For the rest of our presentation, we will present a bit more in a detailed manner uh, our rekeying scheme, our new rekeying scheme. And we will detail a bit more also the uh, treat model that we are considering for our work. Next, uh, it will be followed by some detailed explanation of our analysis, so the first path and the second path, but we'll understand what it is uh, once we have explained what is the model, and we will uh, finally speak about the uh, performances that we can reach using our new Rekeying scheme. So uh, the Rekeying scheme we are proposing is defined as follows, so the temporary key k star is obtained by uh, inner product between the matrix k, which is the long term key K, uh, with a vector composed of uh, the vector R and 1, concatenated with 1. Uh, and all the words inside the K and R are in fact uh, inside the final field defined by the prime P. Uh, to be more practical, we focused on a specific instance, uh, and in fact the following a uh, parameter has been have been chosen sorry so m equal to 4 n equal to 4 and the prime that we have chosen is the uh, mersenne prime 2 to the power 20, 31 minus 1 here we have a graphical representation of the computation we are doing uh, to compute this temporary key k star and as we have uh, said earlier this working function uh, required requires sorry to be protected against side channel attacks so instead of directly perform all this computation, we will instead focus on a mask version, uh, which is represented here. And instead of directly using the, the, the value of the secret key k, we will use instead shared representation of the later. So we, it's represented here. We will sequentially uh, perform the inner product on each share of the key and then recombine on the result to obtain the uh, temporary key k star. So, entering a bit into the details of our treat model, we have the following situation. We have that the uh, masked implementation of the inner product is running inside a chip. And you have an adversary that is able to obtain from a first source the leakage of the result of this inner product, so K star. But on, this, on a second source, he is able to obtain a noisy leakage of the uh, computation of the masked inner product. So we have to follow two paths of analysis. A first one which is more a cryptanalysis part about what can be achieved using the leakage of this k star value. And a second path uh, which is, okay, what 
can be possible for uh, an adversary from a side channel analysis point of view. Next, we will detail our analysis for each of the two possible attack paths. So first we consider the attack path one. In this case, the adversary gets samples of the shape R and the leakage on K times R, and it tries to find the permanent key K. So it corresponds to a learning problem, which is very similar to the learning with error problem or the learning with rounding problem. And since in this case, the rounding function is given by a physical leakage, we will call it the learning with physical rounding problem. As for the other similar assumption, we can define a distribution for this problem. And here we will study when it will be an easy or hard problem. Because when this problem will be hard, it will be impossible for the adversary to recover the key using the attack pass one. To define formally this problem as a learning problem, we need to make some assumptions on the leakage to modelize it as a mathematical function. So since the operation are matrix vector multiplications over FP, but the implementation uses a binary representation, First, we will use an embedding function G, which translates the elements of FP in their binary representation. And then we will consider as a leakage the amine weight of this representation, that is the sum in Z of the, value, of the value of the digits. Finally, we can modelize the learning with physical running in two different ways, depending on the implementation. Third, the parallel version, we consider that the adversary can obtain only the sum of the amine weight of the different elements of Y, that is, the M elements leak together. Then we can, uh, we can consider a serial version of the problem where the adversary recovers the amine weight of all the elements of the vector Y independently. These two assumptions, parallel and serial, are very connected. When M is equal to 1, it is exactly the same assumption. And when M is bigger, Y is a vector, and we see that the samples from the serial version can be converted into samples or the parallel version only by assuming the amine weights we obtain. Consequently, we will focus on the parallel case, studying how hard is a parallel LWPR assumption. So first, we will consider some cases where LWPR is easy, so instances where the parameters are not strong enough for our reeking scheme. For example, for a small p, we take the example for which p is equal to 3, and we begin with a very particular example where y is not a vector, but only an element of f3. In this case, the adversary will observe the leakage of y over z, and the adversary is able to consider it modul modulus 3. So the leakage will correspond to a function f from f3 to f3, which is the amine weight of the re binary representation of y. And this function f can be reconstructed from is to stable, even in example. And in this case, it simply corresponds to the function y squared, a degree 2 function. So it will be easy to use for the adversary. Then, if we are in the parallel implementation, even with y a vector of size m, where m is not 1, the function f prime corresponds to the leakage modulus, corresponding to the leakage modulus 3 will only be the sum of quadratic terms. And since the vector y is made by the matrix vector product of k and r, the adversary can use the leakage equations to create a system of degree 2 over f3 in the variables of the key. And then, solving this quadratic system directly gives all the key elements of the permanent key k. It means that with this parameter, LWPR is easy to solve. And more generally, when it is over fp, solving a degree p-1 system over fp will break the parallel version of the learning with physical rounding. So this way we know that LWPR can be had only if p is big enough. In the paper, we additionally show an attack which happens if n is too small, like 2 or 3, and we see that when n is uh, at least 4 or 5, it will be sufficient to avoid this attack. When p and n are big enough, we will consider that the learning with physical rounding problem is hard and that we can base our reeking scheme on this assumption. So the main concerns for the security in this case will be the potential weaknesses modulo p or modulo 2. More specifically, when we are modulo p, the multiplication is over this field, so only the leakage function will provide some security. And when we are in characteristic 2, the binary representation and the amine weight of it have a linear behavior, so we have to see if the multiplication is providing enough security. For the analysis modulo p, we consider the properties of the PRE function from fp to zm to fp, as seen in the previous, lay, previous slide in the case p equals 3. When p is close to 2 to the 31, the parameter we chose, we can show a lower bound on the algebraic degree of this function, 
So it means an attacker would have to solve a high degree system. So in this case, it prevents algebraic attacks. And we can also show that there is no good linear approximation of this function. So it is a way to avoid the attacks based on solving a, no a noisy linear system, like the one which are used to solve the learning parity with noise problem. Then, for the analysis in characteristic 2, we study the vectorial Boolean function, which corresponds to the multiplication of k times r when it is embedded over f2. We could perform some experimental tests on the degree and on the maximum expected linear probability of small cases. And on this example, we showed that the parameters are sufficient to avoid the attacks, so we can avoid the algebraic and linear attacks in this case. Finally, for the maximum expected differential probability, we were able to prove an upper bound on it, and so it is sufficient to prevent the differential attacks. We will next focus on the second attack path that we have considered in our treat model. And for that, we first need to define the target we have considered in our analysis. So we focused on an hardware implementation on an Kintex 7 FPGA. And from an implementation point of view, we tried to leverage the keomomorphism properties of the inner product we use. So as a reminder, uh, keomomorphism comes with some benefits in terms of masked implementation because first it enables uh, independent manipulation of the shares uh, which in fact assure that our implementation do not suffer from composability issues and mitigates the risk of physical defaults. Uh, a second point is that it um, enables a linear overhead of, uh, it implies sorry, a linear overhead uh, with the number of shares and uh, every share is processed once, uh, which ensures that uh, we have an inherently good resistance against horizontal attacks. And finally, it allows a scalable evaluation of the security, uh, because since each share is processed sequentially, increasing the number of shares is the same as reusing the same circuitry multiple times. So the evaluation for one share is enough to assess the security considering different amount of shares. So, more practically, we do not need to repeat evaluations for different cases. We are considering uh, five multiplication in parallel, so five modular multiplication in parallel. Uh, this has been motivated first from a security point of view, because more data processed in parallel means more noise, and so it's, it's more difficult to recover information about the, the secret key. And uh, from a performance point of view, because yeah, we are processing more in parallel, so it's it's way more efficient. We we have less latency. Uh, the memory units uh, that are considered, uh, such as the key or the randomness, uh, are mapped to BRAM. And we are using uh, optimized modular multiplication from a previous work from Copperman et al. Uh, that is relying on DSPs. Uh, overall, the general architecture of our solution is similar to the one of uh, Broncha et al, uh, which enable comparison between the metrics. The architecture of our implementation is composed of two main modules. So the first one is the memory, holding the value of R, the value of the shares of the key, and the uh, refresh mechanism. And the second one is the dot prod module, which implements the inner product in itself with an accumulator to process all the different shares. The dot product pipeline is organized as follows. We have the five modular multiplication at the input, and then some addition in order to compute the internal values of the inner product. And the accumulator is at the output of the full pipeline. In order to assess the security of our masked implementation, we need to fulfill two requirements. The first one is that the share have to be manipulated independently, which is guaranteed by design as motivated earlier in this talk and in fact evaluated by the work of Blanche et al. And secondly, a sufficient noise level is required and this is in fact the main focus of this work. So we used a Xilinx Spartan 6 FPGA on a Sakura J board uh, to evaluate this noise level using a Tektronix CT1 probe and a Picoscope uh, 5244D at uh, 500 mega sample per second with a 12-bit resolution. 
for the uh, implementation we considered three shares. As a first step, we try to identify the point of interest in our measurements, and for that we use the SNR metrics. Uh, and the figure that is shown on the, the slide show uh, at the top the, the average trace that we were measuring, and at the bottom uh, the different SNR value that we are able to, to get, and the uh, dark crosses are in fact the point of interest that we are keeping for our analysis. Based on this point of interest, we try to approximate the amount of information we were able to obtain uh, from our measurements. For this, we made the Gaussian assumption for the leakage, which means that the leakage value when a specific data is processed follows a Gaussian distribution. Under this assumption, our analysis relies on two bounds for the information we can recover from the leakage, which are the Gaussian perceived information for the lower bound and the Gaussian hypothetical information for the higher bound. We are then able to estimate the amount of measurements required to perform a side channel attack based on the information bounds we obtained. Our results show that, using 10 shares, 2 to the power 64 measurements are required to recover 32 bits of the key. Regarding the performance uh, metrics, our ranking proposal based on the LWPR assumption appears to be competitive, both in terms of latency and cost. As a first metric, the key size is shown in kilobits in red for the branched HAL implementation of the LWR based solution, and in blue for our implementation. While both curves are linear with the amount of shares, the one of the LWPR based solution has a slope approximately five times smaller than the LWR solution. The difference is even more significant when comparing randomness requirement and latency, uh, because these underline that even with more parallelism, the LWR based solution is orders of magnitude slower. And uh, the same kind trend to be, the same kind of trend, sorry, can be observed for the randomness requirement. As a conclusion, we propose in this work a new working scheme based on a new R learning problem, the learning with physical rounding problem. It consists on a combination of an inner product of a prime field and a physical leakage function, performed by the implementation leakage and not explicitly as done in the weak paragraph of the dark matter work. Considering the Hemingway leakage function as a first analysis step, the working function proposed ensure relevant cryptographic properties and allow competitive implementation in hardware. The evaluation of a, the proposal with more general leakage function is a natural next step. And another open question is the practical impact of serialization on the physical security. Such serialization could be, for example, found in software implementation. Finally, uh, a research direction could be uh, to check whether integrating such a ranking scheme in a more general leakage regional primitive or mode is feasible.